guys, welcome or welcome back to Sissy's Faces. This is the first day I'm up after fainting and hitting my forehead on the wall of our bathroom. You see, since last Sunday's video, the slight cold I was telling you guys about turned out to be much worse. Along with a horrific cough, I was unable to breathe and was too weak to stand. It took four days, lots of love, soup, rest, and fluids to finally get me back to somewhat of myself again. So in today's video, I'm trying to also get back into a routine. And when I say routine, I mean homemaking and cleaning routine. And that's what today's video is all about. So let's start from the beginning. Last Sunday, I woke up on my bathroom floor and couldn't remember how I got there. As I was lying there with my eyes closed, I kept saying to myself, why is this bed so cold? When I opened my eyes and realized I was on the floor, I was scared and yelled out to hubby. He immediately gave me some water and put me back to bed. The next thing I remember was sleeping a lot and eating lots of soup, popsicles, fruit cups, and jello. I listened to my body and remained either in bed or on the couch, most if not all of the day for two days. On the third day, I moved about, but not very much, and by the fourth day, I was able to start my cleaning routine. I'm still not at 100% and never got a real doctor's diagnosis, but according to mom and a neighbor, it's either COVID or RSV. My sense of smell and taste did return after a few days, but I still have a slight cough runny nose and the knot on my forehead is still very tender. Also, if you know me, you can tell by the look in my eyes I'm still not at 100%, but getting back into a routine has helped. On this day, what would have normally taken two hours to accomplish took all day, but I'm listening to my body and doing what I can. My plan today was to clean the tub of my washer, which was done, tidy the family room, I'm doing that now, and if I can muster enough energy, clean my bathroom. Again, I'm not going to push myself, but I'm also trying to clean like I routinely do. I read that by saying a routine, it's also part of healing, because carrying out routine activities or repetition reduces stress by making the situation seem controllable and predictable, because when you're sick, it's not controllable or predictable. What's sad about this entire situation is that I didn't know I needed a break until my body forced me to take one. I don't know and I don't want to know what I would have done without hubby. He spent those four days cooking, shopping and cleaning like a pro. He also had to care for our youngest son who caught what I had and on the worst day of our illness, our oldest son returned home early from work to help. Max could also sense something was wrong because he would smell my nose and mouth on occasion and bark whenever I stood up and walked without assistance. He also laid across my lap anytime he had an opportunity to do so. I did take a few breaks while cleaning this couch to drink water. It was important to me and hubby to maintain our fluids during this time as I feel this was the key to our healing. My youngest son and I also didn't have an appetite but ate at least one bowl of soup per day, a container of jello or a fruit cup, two popsicles and four of the 16.9 ounce bottles of water. As the days continued, we were able to eat and drink more, eventually eating solid foods which was a sandwich by the third day. I don't recall if I told you guys this in my last video, 
But while visiting mom in the hospital for five days, I did wear a mask and gloves, but not during the entire visit. I also got a little lax during the visit and didn't wash my hands as often as I should have. This bug definitely was acquired while visiting her, but it took three days later for the symptoms to become debilitating. I have visited her while she was in the hospital before, but not for five days straight. I'm sharing this so you are aware in case you ever find yourself in a similar situation. Lesson learned. Wear a mask, gloves, entire visit, and wash your gloves after touching anything. That's a tall order, but I don't ever want to feel this way again. Now that our tub wash cycle is complete, I've dried the soap dispenser compartment, door of the washer, rubber gasket of the drum, and will leave the door slightly ajar overnight. By doing this after every use, it'll prevent a buildup of mold. I do have the energy to clean my bathroom, so once we're done in the family room, we'll start in there. I would usually spray down the bathroom and allow the product to sit while I clean another room, but due to my illness, I forgot to do that today. So we're gonna start cleaning this bathroom right after we spray it down. We're also not using spray away glass cleaner on the shower doors, and we'll use Clorox wipes versus a scrub bright sponge to clean the sinks. I'm trying to reduce the amount of cleaning products I use on cold or rainy days because I'm not opening a window to air out the room. It's also a great way to save on cleaning products. Although I'm not using spray glass cleaner on my shower doors, but as you just saw, I am using it on our bathroom mirrors. Sprayaway glass cleaner is great at cleaning shower doors, but I'm using my vinegar mixture to do that today. Also, while wiping down my sink, some gunk was removed from the plug of the drain. It may look like a bug, but it's actually a buildup that occur around sink drains, toilets, and other wet areas within your home. After we're done cleaning the sink, we're gonna dust the jetted tub. If you've watched me for a while, you know this tub isn't used, but once per month, I do wipe it down with Clorox wipes. And after each use, I fill the tub with cleaning vinegar, Dawn dish detergent and water, and run the jets for at least 15 minutes. I'm using a clean microfiber cloth to clean the items I leave out on my sink. By the way, do you leave your toothbrush and other like items out on top of the sink or place them in the vanity? I like leaving them out to air dry, but a friend of mine leaves her in the vanity drawer because according to her, her toilet sits next to her sink. I also want to wipe down my vanity decor. After spending so much time in here over the last few days, I've noticed how dusty these items looked, so I want to take a few minutes before cleaning the shower to wipe them down.
I'm still loving this power drill and it has saved me a lot of time and muscle. Unlike the boys' showers upstairs, this shower doesn't have a white shower panel as the base, but a ceramic tile floor instead. So it's not as satisfying seeing all the debris go down the drain, but it was satisfying to see how clean it was when I was done. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not using any sprayaway glass cleaner on the doors, just my vinegar mixture, and I'm wiping each door at least three times, rinsing my microfiber cloth after each door. I'm also not using any product on the exterior of the door, just the same microfiber cloth used on the interior door after having rinsed it. I also wiped the exterior doors in the opposite direction at least once to see if there were any streaks left on the interior. This is a great tip to use when trying to determine if the streak is located on the interior or exterior of the door. After replacing these items, we're going to clean hubby's vanity and again, I'm using spray away glass cleaner and a paper towel to clean the mirror. I found using a paper towel to remove the glass cleaner versus a microfiber cloth does a better job and leaves fewer streaks. We're also using Clorox wipes to clean the sink and vanity versus a scotch Bright sponge and scrub brush. Today I'm more focused on disinfecting the vanity and faucet versus scrubbing it clean. Once we're done with Hubby's Vanity, we're going to wipe down and replace these items before cleaning the toilet room. If you're new to my channel, each full bathroom within this home has separate toilet rooms. But I've noticed the homes that are being built today have built-in storage above the toilets. Our home came without them, so I placed art above the toilet instead. <music> As you can see, the black gloves are on and we're starting from the top down. I begin by wiping the artwork first, then the tissue container and poopery. Some folks like scrubbing the interior of the toilet first, but I save that for last. I like cleaning the top of the toilet first, handle, seats, and then the interior with a flush. I end cleaning the toilet by wiping around the exterior of the toilet bowl to the floor. By the way, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My friends call me Charlene, but my family call me Sissy. That's the channel name. I live outside of Atlanta with my hubby of 32 years, our two young adult sons, and fur baby Max. I enjoy creating cleaning and homemaking videos. 
and give you tips and tricks on how I maintain a clean and tidy home. So if you enjoy this type of content at the end of this video, please remember to hit that like subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Also introduce yourself in the comments. I would love to hear from you and I always respond. And if you've already subscribed, thank you. And please hit that like button as it really supports my channel. So day one is complete and I've accomplished my goal of cleaning the washing machine tub, tidying the family room, and cleaning and disinfecting the surfaces of the primary bath. I'm not mopping in here today because at this point my body was telling me to rest. As a matter of fact, I think I slept the rest of the day because the next day I was full of energy and ready to clean. My goal this day is to clean my bedroom, decorate the guest room dresser, clean my coffee pot that I hadn't used in five days, and the fridge because I have a grocery pickup at Walmart scheduled for later that evening. I even surprised myself and cooked breakfast. We're over halfway into this video and if you're still with me at the end of the video, please leave me an orange heart emoji in the comments. Orange is my favorite color and the orange heart signifies love, support, and our close bond as family and friends. It was nice taking it slow today and giving the TV and fireplace a thorough cleaning, something I hadn't done in a very long time. Also, thank you for your support by watching and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate you and look forward every week to reading your comments. By the way, how was last week? Did you do anything exciting or do you plan to do anything exciting this week? My plan for this week is to stay home and take it easy until I am fully recovered. my channel for a while you know I normally make my bed first before cleaning my room but today I wanted to let it air out longer than usual considering I have been sick over the past week I did wash my sheets three days ago but instead of giving the bed at least 15 minutes to air out which is what I routinely do today I'm giving it at least an hour this will allow the moisture to dry up reducing the possibility of mold odors and dust bites sure if I shared this before but these lamps have this clear removable glass that you can insert artwork family photos or faux stamps in them when they arrived they were covered in this fishnet material to hold the glass in place but I removed them I may remove the glass one day and clean inside it but that's not on my list of things to do today Yep, that 
happened, and I just picked it up and kept it moving. It was the dry microfiber cloth, so it's fine. If it had been the wet one, I would have rinsed it before reusing. With this dry one, I shook it well before drying this stand. Once we're done cleaning this china cabinet, I want to decorate the fireplace. By the way, I am still loving this piece. Instead of using it for china, I like storing me and hubby's everyday clothes in here because we can see everything we have, thus eliminating duplicate purchases. It's unconventional, but it works. As you can see, I'm using the darker orange microfiber cloth to clean and the lighter one to dry. I find this method is quicker and it reduces the amount of water left standing on the surfaces, especially wood surfaces. I didn't realize I had so many decor books until I decorated the console table I placed on the catwalk upstairs. I returned the console, by the way, to Home Goods because I didn't love it. And if I don't love something, it's eventually donated or trashed. So I figured my best bet was to return it. I now have somewhere to place the decor from the return console. I have been meaning to have this TV hung in the guest room for years, and again, thanks to hubby, I don't have to wait any longer. As I mentioned before, I'm using the decor from the return console. But first, I want to clean and prep the area. Now that the dresser is centered, we can wipe it down before decorating. Also, guests can adjust the TV to tilt for better viewing as they're lying in bed. These little lines in the dresser are a perfect spot to trap dust and dirt. I have used a vacuum in the past to clean them out, but today, we're going to use the wet microfiber cloth to clean in between the lines and follow it up with the dry one. To my surprise, the microfiber cloth cleaned just as well as the vacuum. And I didn't have to wipe it down again after vacuuming, something I had to do on multiple occasions in the past. my decor books, I was surprised at the number and didn't recall when or where I purchased most of them. These, along with the ones on the bedroom fireplace, are all I have, and I don't plan to purchase any more anytime soon. I do enjoy getting ideas and inspiration from them, but will hold off on future purchases for a while, or at least until I decorate for spring. <music> As you can see, we're now in our walk-in closet. I want to do a quick tidy because over the last five days, I mean, the boys have been taking care of laundry. So I want to adjust a few things and dust before cleaning the fridge and coffee pot in the kitchen.
really want a cup of coffee today, but I figured since the coffee pot hasn't been used in five days, it would be a great time to clean it and change the water filter. If you use a Keurig, you need to change the water filter every three to six months. I change mine every three months because it's pretty easy to do. You pull out the water filter holder, remove the bottom, and then take out the old water filter. You wanna soak the new water filter in a bowl of water, making sure it's submerged for five minutes. While it's soaking, I'm gonna clean the dishes out of the sink, but after five minutes, you wanna rinse the new water filter for 60 seconds, install it into the filter holder, and then snap it back into the water container. There's not many dishes in the sink because the boys have been staying on top of it since I've been ill. As you can see though, there are dishes in the dishwasher already and they are dirty, but the boys will not run a cycle until the dishwasher is full. In between this time, I've also started cooking breakfast, which is our traditional chicken flavored grits, hash browns, and cheesy scrambled eggs. I would have also cooked bacon, but we were out. I've already cleaned the sink and I'm filling it up again with warm water and Dawn dishwashing liquid so I can clean the parts of the carriage. The water filter is still soaking even though it's been over five minutes, but before replacing it, I wanna make sure the carriage and its parts are clean first. I forgot to pour the old coffee out of the drip tray first before washing it. And because of that oversight, I need to change the water again in order to wash the dishes from breakfast. That's what happens when you're ill though. But I am patting myself on the back because I am getting things done. Once I'm done cleaning these parts, I want to reassemble the carriage before eating breakfast. My goal today is to drink a cup of coffee with breakfast, something I have missed over the past five days. I also need to clean the fridge. I scheduled a Walmart grocery pickup for later this evening, and my oldest son has agreed to stop by and grab them on the way home. You'd be breaking every vow I can understand you're tired of this town And I'm not saying that we have to settle down now Just remember this We could have been stardust Same world but without us Something made us each other out there made us realize we're more than just stardust. Ignore this fact if you must. To do what your dreams are telling you to do, and I'll be out there looking for someone like you. Stardust, stardust. Now that the carriage is reassembled, I want to place breakfast in these glass containers so the family can grab something to eat when they're ready. Although not recorded, I did sit down and eat breakfast with a cup of coffee, but I didn't finish and had to wrap and store it in the fridge to finish later. 
I'm the lazy one, so I guess I should have known. You said yourself you want to do this alone. But if your dreams are making it hard to think straight, if you still love me, I can wait, I can wait. And remember this, we could have been stardust, same world but without us. Something made us, made us find each other out there, made us realize we're more than just stardust. Ignore this fact if you must To do what your dreams are telling you to do Now that breakfast is complete and everyone's stomach is full, including myself, I want to store the leftovers and clean the fridge. And as you can see, I couldn't finish my plate, but I did finish it later that evening. Is, we could have been stardust Same world but without us Something made us, made us find each other I'm not cleaning the drawers today because I didn't order anything to go in them, just the shelves. Also, at this point, I was pretty tired, but I was determined to finish. I don't think you're supposed to go. Maybe I'm just too slow. We should just lean together. We yeah. could have been stardust. Same world, but without us. Something made us, made us find each other out there. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if so, please hit that like subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Also, please remember to place that orange heart emoji in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.